So here's the introduction and gives some ideas about the basic thought process that we had in why we designed this game for Neon District. Um, we feel as though there are many tactical combat games out there that um, already have a lot of rich complexity. People want to spend a lot of time making their decisions over the board. And those type of games are not necessarily the ones we should be competing with because we don't really have um, a natural advantage over those games. The game that I feel like we should make is one where we use the, the one strong advantage that we have, which is individual ownership and try to maximize that feature as much as possible. So the question is, how would we do that? And how does that question of ownership, um, how does that impact gameplay? So our thought here is that the, um, once you have ownership, you want to accentuate that as much as possible by making um, the, uh, the guys that you have change their, their powers, become more customizable. Um, also the party that they're with, uh, we want that to be more important. Um, and so that you spend um, those decisions that you spend on how to configure your guys, how to configure your party are more interesting. Um, if you do that, then it means that you're not, you don't necessarily have a huge amount of time uh, inside gameplay um, to be spent thinking about long tactical or strategic decisions because then you would not have, your game would basically run too long. So with that in mind, um, we, what, we're, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make a game that plays fast, uh, in fact, in an automated way, um, inside a single gameplay. The automation doesn't mean, however, that there isn't a certain amount of randomness and that, or that, the, that you will be able to know beforehand whether you will be able to win an objective um, based strictly upon uh, the guys that you have and, and your opponents. Um, so there'll be kind of unexpected delights within gameplay um, as to does it resolve the way that you thought it would, did it not. Part of that idea could be that some of the results might um, come off as particularly lucky or unlucky, um, which actually I think would uh, add something to the game so that it's not um, completely deterministic whether you're going to win or lose. In addition, we have kind of moved, um, and also one of the other things this will do, which is similar to a game like Summoner's War, is allow um, a certain amount of, uh, you know, some people might call it grinding, but a certain amount of time spent in combat that you don't really need to pay attention to if you don't want to. Um, also, the fact that it is somewhat random and automated will make it, um, give it a more, could give it a potentially more whimsical or interesting bend as well. To give some sense of what the um, attributes are in these characters, we've got hit points here in the top right, 15, 14, 13 for these three characters. Um, we have the uh, attacking system, which is the first number is the amount of time that um, it takes to do that attack. Um, it's actually a penalty against when it happens, not a cost that you pay in order to in order for it to happen later down the line. So for instance, in this one, it will cost five units of time for this character to be active again, and in return he will do a damage. We've got three, three uh, heroes, um, Bob, that we just went over, and he also has this special ability. We've got one just called Tank, 14 hit points. His base attack um, only does three damage, but it only has a drawback of three time slots. And he also has one point of armor, which is just an ability that reduces all damage that's done to him by one. Um, his ability, if he takes five damage, then he uh, forces all enemies to target him. So one of the concepts in this game is that uh, because it is automated, all targeting begins randomized. However, that targeting can be changed in the course of the game. So for instance, if this trigger happens, if he takes five damage, then he, he then forces all the enemy characters to um, attack him, which is basically uh, tar uh, changes the group targeting, um, the, the sort of group targeting um, toggle um, against an enemy team or his own team. So in this case, it's, it's going to change the enemy team. Uh, last character has a heal that's done when a friendly character is at five or less hit points. 
um, and also has a sort of um, slightly worse base attack. Now we go to the three characters. Um, this is a three on three fight. Um, we've got a hater bot, 12 hit points, base attack three, cost um, three to do. And this one can also change the, um, change, uh, the, the friendly characters targeting um, if he spots any other character doing hacking. We'll get into what hacking is in a moment, which is that there's, um, in addition to the three characters, there's also an, an environmental uh, unit that this would be something that is not a uh, character that would be attacked, but is instead affected through a different ability. In this case, um, it would be a, affected through hacking. So um, this 10 HD is like hacking points that need to be um, done in order to, to um, stop whatever benefit or, or stop whatever card text it is on this. In this case, it's um, after 15 ticks of time, all the bots are restored. That means they, they all go back to full health. And if any of them were knocked out, um, they'd come back to life. So in this, uh, this would be something that you'd want your characters to have hacking. Um, in this first play example I'm going to give, none of the characters have hacking. So um, this, this will be a slightly more difficult mission um, for the good guys to win. Now we'll go over our last two guys. We've got Beaterbot. He uh, has a very strong attack. And also he randomizes um, the, the targeting of the team whenever someone gets knocked out. Last person, um, here's Stunbot. He has a very uh, slow attack, but when he damages somebody, he, um, he um, moves them back on the uh, time chart by four. So um, much of these things, um, now that you're about to see, would, would work slightly digitally um, differently in that they be in terms of the tracking, but um, we're just gonna kind of go through it um, in a, just in this paper example somewhat slowly. So we've got uh, Beaterbot would be going first, and Beaterbot's text is um, that uh, he's going to attack somebody and it's going to push him back four to do six damage. So Beaterbot would move back four, which now puts him at the fifth time slot there. And normally this randomization as to who he would be targeting would be um, done by a computer, but of course here we're just gonna roll a die, one, two, um, three, four, five, six. So he's going to attack the person in front, and um, when he does that, he does six, but because of the armor of the tank, it only does five damage, which then triggers his ability. If he takes five damage, all the enemies target tank. So basically now all these characters are now targeting him, which is to the advantage of this team. So um, now we go back to this, and uh, the, net, the leftmost character would go, which is tank. Tank um, has attack of three, and once again, to figure out what he's doing, we'll do the same thing of just rolling. rolling is he's attacking Haterbot. Now his targeting would stay the same um, throughout the duration of this fight unless, unless there's something that would change the target. Um, but in this example, uh, it's, it might be a little difficult to see, but we're just gonna point him at the other character. We should have obviously a better UX design um, in practice. So he's done three damage and this also moves him back three. So if we notice him going from one to four, he will take another turn before Beaterbot. So this sort of timing system would be very important to play with and a lot of different abilities would affect it. Back to our time, we've got Haterbot is the next one to go. And um, he just does three damage for three, but uh, it only gets two because of the armor of this character. So it's now got seven damage done to him and Haterbot moves back three. Um, whenever there are two characters in here, this would randomize. So um, it could be that Haterbot would go first in this example, sort of 50-50. Now it's Bob's turn. Bob's uh, the big hitter. Um, we need to figure out who he is targeting. Um, and he's targeting Beaterbot, which is uh, this middle guy here. And he does his base attack of eight damage for, um, I'm using the dice here to track hit points if that wasn't clear, uh, for five movements on the time chart. So he goes back to six. Now we've got two characters left, the Medic and the Stunbot. The Medic will only use his ability or her ability when um, a character has five or less hit points, um, a friendly character. And even though Tank has taken seven, he has still seven left, so the Medic won't heal and just go uh, attacks. 
tax beater bot takes four um, time slots to do three damage. So now beater bot's taken 12 and the medic will move back four. This moves over to the five with uh, beater bot. And we'll go ahead and just switch their positions. This would be random, but for um, this demonstration, we won't mess with it too much. Last, stun bot. And uh, stun bot will do only one damage um, because uh, of the armor on tank. And that is now done eight damage. When it stuns him, it moves him back four on the time chart. So uh, tank will go from four to eight, pushing it way back. And stun, that stunning ability does take five. So now um, it moves to where Bob is. So this is the sort of first round um, and uh, all the conditions stay the same, and now we've got um, three empty slots. So all these, um, you, all, everything here is gonna move down three, as well as there will be three ticks, three time ticks on RepairNet. So we'll go ahead and mark that with three. If it gets to 15, it will heal all of the bots. So we move everybody down three, basically until one of these characters is in the first position. And now that character goes. So Haterbot gets another turn. And now Bob is gonna go, everybody ticks down one. And this now ticks off to 13. Bob is going to attack and he does his special ability because Haterbot is taking eight damage, so only has four left. Bob does uh, five damage to everybody and moves back seven, so that will move Bob all the way up to eight. And this will knock out Haterbot. It also gets removed from this. And uh, Stunbot also takes five, so it's only got two damage left. However, there is some good news for the bot team as uh, they're almost ready to trigger repair net. So now here we need to go down two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. We'll notate this, so this is two more, that's 15, and so it would happen again where all these would come back to life. Um, and all the damage would be removed. So in this example, you can see where this team um, not having a hacker would have difficulty in doing um, in, in, in di difficulty in doing this mission. These um, would come back in the first position, and uh, the the fight would continue. In the second example, we've replaced the character tank with character hacker. And this character is set up to be good at missions that involve um, things that can be hacked. So uh, in this mission, it, uh, it says if there's a hackable target, he'll hack um, six points. So that allows this, if t ten, 10 hacking points get done to it, it will turn it off. It's still fighting the same three bot characters. So here, we'll assume this is randomized. Um, we've got the medic goes first. The medic would target one of these bots at random. Um, it, in this case, it's Beater Bot, who she does three to, and moves back four. We've got Stun Bot, who is going to target someone randomly. And Stun Bot targets Bob. Stun Bot moves back five and moves Bob back four and does one, two points of damage to Bob. Now we've got the hacker. Now here, because um, there is a hackable target, that triggers and now it takes six um, points of hacking. Once this has hit this 10 point threshold, then repair net is turned off. So um, that costs the hacker four movements uh, on the time board, so it moves back to this fifth position. Now what also happens, and this was something that didn't come up in my first play example, was the ability of Haterbot, which is if, it, if anyone ever does any hacking, it will switch the targets 
of all the characters to um, attack the the uh, the character that has been doing the hacking. So now all three of these characters are attacking hacker. Um, there's two attacks left. We've got Haterbot who does three, and also uh, Beaterbot which does uh, six. So in this first play example, um, you can see how it would look very different. Um, what, what, could, what would potentially be happening here is there'd be sort of a race to see if um, hacker would be able to uh, clear the repair net. Even though it's, the play is automated, there is still um, some randomization inside of it in terms of how it's going to evolve. And this could make for an interesting setup where um, it's a, sort of like a movie where you're, you're, you have set up your team, you're hoping that it works well, but you don't necessarily know what the results are going to be until you watch it.